Have you figured out your niche? Are you helping adding value to other people's lives? Then you're in the right place. Welcome to Munira's Musings with your host, co-author of Conversations with Top Real Estate Investors, Volume 3, Munira Zahabi. Greetings from Chicagoland. This is Munira, your host and friend for Munira's Musings. Welcome to yet another episode of Munira's Musings. Our guest today is Gordon Jenkins, all the way from Australia. He had to wake up early this morning to join us, but we are happy to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. You're welcome. I'm honored and humbled, and it could be a little delay, but you know. But before we jump in, you know, Gordon is a visibility guy. He is. He shows people how to grow through networking. That's his niche, and we are going to learn a little bit about from him. But before we jump in, because I know we all want to learn about networking, that's the theme of this one, it seems. But let me tell you a little bit about who I am and what Munira's Musing is. So I am Munira Zahabi. I live in Chicago with my family. I am blessed. It's snowing out here, and I am very happy that I just finished traveling a lot of snow because we have a long driveway. But, you know, I am the niche navigator, and I help coaches and business entrepreneurs find and market to their niche. The niche is a cornerstone of your foundation of your business because without it, you can grow, but you can't grow, if you know what I mean. You have to have a niche. You have to have your target audience, your target offering that you need to do. There's a lot of people out there in business, but they're not sure what they are doing. If you need help, you can always reach out to me. Munira's Musings is a show that came about after I met a few people who were doing awesome things, but were not aware that they were doing awesome things. So my thing was, let me just promote you, expose you on my show and promote you because there's somebody out there that needs you and somebody needs to hear this message. So, so that's how Munira's Musings came about. We have a lot of um, we have a lot of videos on YouTube. I have a channel there. Go find it. I am on LinkedIn. I am on Facebook. Go find me. And there's only one Manira Zahabi in the world. But and if you like what I do and want to be on my show, go ahead and message me. You can be on my show. If you have a niche and you want to talk about it, how you got there, what you did, anything about your niche. You have to reach out to me and I'll get you on my, on my show. And we just have to figure out the date, but we will do it. And if you like the show, then please share, subscribe, and, you know, um, you know like these uh, videos because it's where we get our recognition. But without further ado, thank you so much, Gordon, again. Thank you so much. And tell me a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, good. Good afternoon. I think it is to everyone there. So it's uh, it's just gone six o'clock in the morning down in Melbourne, and we were chatting before we went live. Uh, you're out shoveling snow, and uh, we've got a, a heat wave in Melbourne, so uh, we might swap next week. You can come to Melbourne. I'll come to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> so thank, first of all, thank you for having me here uh, on the show, and, and to all your listeners and. Um, what can I say? You know, you talk about the niche navigator, and to me, that's exactly what I've got my niche. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of business coaches out there, and um, when you're in a very competitive marketplace, you have to stand out, and you have to stand out in a way that compels people to seek you out rather than you seek them out. Uh, and so I became the, the visible guy. And the visible guy is just that, that I concentrate and I talk about motivating people to, to network and to network with a purpose and to network in a way that suits their DNA, suits their journey. Uh, so let me go quickly back a little bit for those that um, uh, don't know too much about me. Like, just like you, 
we're all over LinkedIn. We're very visible. Uh, we're all over LinkedIn, Instagram. I've spent 20 odd years in professional services firms working for some of the leading international banks, uh, the likes of Merrill Lynch, UBS, Deutsche Bank. I've always ran large teams. I've worked in private equity. I've worked in teams that are very diverse, both in the geographical spread, uh, demographic, but also something I call psychographic. The psychographic is the traits of that individual. So the values, the cultures, the passions, the purpose, which is really interesting concept. Probably around about 2004, after being on the corporate train with married, thinking we're going to travel the world with my wife, who was also in corporate, uh, she got knocked down with a life-threatening illness and needed a double lung transplant. And my world suddenly stopped. I was no longer traveling the world. We didn't know whether we had one year, two years, five years, 10 years to live. 2006, she had a double lung transplant. And probably for about the next eight years, I lost my way in life. Um, I took jobs because I needed the money, not because of the right jobs for me. Uh, and I think we've all been in this dark space where we we think about getting, with, we, we've got a number of problems, a number of our own personal situations, but often I say it's not how we get into the dark space, it's how we get out. That really makes the point. And I was lost. Through this journey, uh, I became a carer for my wife, and I found it quite upsetting that people were ringing up and saying, how's my wife, how's my wife? but no one's asking how Gordon was. And yeah. it was quite I, interesting. I, and I felt very invisible. And when I take that back to my school days when I wanted to do cooking at school, but the system only allowed me to do woodwork because girls had to do cooking and boys had to do woodwork, the system was broken. Then I was told I was stupid at school because I was a mathematical genius, but I couldn't spell because the system said I was stupid. And I actually failed the dyslexic test, but there was only one test for dyslexia. So as I'm going through this process, I suddenly realized, you know, it's not me that's the problem. It's, it's the system, the problem that just because I don't fit the system doesn't mean I'm the problem. It means that the system isn't, is very concentrated in a very tunnel vision. To put yeah. a long story short, sure, that I, because we've only got 35 minutes, and we both know our stories and we could talk for three weeks on this. I sat down with a client and it was actually a client who told me that not to be the invisible guy, but to be the visible guy. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? And he said, well, look, you make people visible. We make people memorable and we make people intriguing. And in terms of doing that, we compel people to act. And I said, well, go on, tell me a little bit more. He said, the visible guy is all about being positive and being forward thinking. The invisible guy is very much about this. These are the problems I've been through. So feel sorry for me. And that's a real yeah. change. That's a real mindset change. So today I travel the world. I speak around the world. We do podcasts like this. I'm an author. Um, I look after some top tier clients around the world as well as one-on-one -on -one mentoring. And we help people navigate their journey. And I use something called your path, our journey. And that is my story. I've taken the path that was right for me and where my passions lie not the path that people tell me to take because they've taken the path. So I think, you know, when we look at life, when we look at a journey through business, through our personal development, we, we follow what's right for us, what our DNA is, what our passions are. <clears throat> and that's what I, <clears throat> in a simple terms, that's what I do. And the outcomes we get are absolutely uh, mind-blowing. Uh, I'm a hard taskmaster. I hold a lot of people accountable. We, uh, accountability is big for me. But every single day, I'm amazed at the outcomes that we achieve. Ask away, you know, ask me any questions. <laughs> you know, you bring a good point because as the niche navigator, I also use a compass and I help people navigate their purpose. Yeah. Most of the time, because we are in a predicament, we have to take the next step and whatever comes to our aid, if you will, a job yeah. or a, you know, we have to sustain ourselves. So whatever comes to our aid, just have to grab them, you know. Yeah. And I, I understand that completely because, like, I, I, I'm sorry about your wife, but my husband is going through the same thing and he needs a kidney transplant. Yeah. 
he <coughs> wants to live, but he, both, both of his is failing. So now he's on dialysis. Yeah. And it changed my world. And like you, you know, you're the first person who said that, that you feel invisible. So what about me? I'm the caretaker. I'm helping him. I'm doing a lot. Can somebody at least, hello, I'm here. Yeah. You know, you feel invisible, right? And so Absolutely. this outlet, this for me, this outlet and meeting my, my people and my clients and, you know, having these interviews allows me to live in my own because once this is done, I go back to being a caretaker. So I, I, lo I love it and I understand that completely. So... Tell me, take us through the journey where you became the, you found your niche. I mean, when this customer client told you about being invisible, how did that transform your life? And what are the steps that you took to become the visible guy? Okay. So I don't talk about failures. Um, I talk about mistakes because I don't believe in failures. I think everything we do, uh, we learn along the way. So like a lot of people, and I presume it's the, I think it's the same in the States when I've met people in the States, that I became a coach. And I know that once I get involved with a client, I can make a real difference and I make a real purposeful difference. But just saying you're a business coach doesn't, make it, doesn't mean anything. And I think the best way that I came about to be a coach was clients. People came to me that knew me over 20, 25 years and said, well, now that you're not working, can you help us grow the business. And I'm not, in fact, I'm the worst person. My wife would testify. I'm no good at technology. I'm no good at technology and I'm no good at operation. What I've done all my life is people. So when I think about working at the age of five in my, my dad had a motor accessory shop. So sell, sold parts for engines and cars. And people used to come in, in to get some wash to wash the cars. But then they'd walk out with a great big bucket, with a new sponge, a bucket, a hose, um, uh, a wash and wax, the whole air fresheners, the whole lot. It wasn't the cell. What it was was the compelling people to, when they finished their car, to bring it on the forecourt, which, and this just shows how old I am, uh, we'll take a Polaroid camera shot and we'd put a picture of the car on the wall. And what happened was, the customer then brought his friend in to say, hey, look at my car on the wall because the customer was really proud that his car was shiny. And then the customer's friend wanted exactly what the customer had bought. So, so, so it's the compelling people, but it was, a serve, it was that customer service that you gave along the way. And for me, through my life, um, I used to be a, a money trader, um, a, a, one of those guys in the pits going, hands yes, no. Um, I thought everything was about money. And my life, I always thought, was about money. Uh, today, and I never really understood why I didn't want to be a stockbroker when I came to Australia, why I didn't want to be a stockbroker when I left my business. When I left UBS, I didn't understand why I didn't want to be a, a stockbroker or a financial advisor. And one of my mentors, we sat down and we talked a lot about it. And one of my mentors turned around to me and we talked a lot about it. And I came up with this phrase that I used to be, cash rich and passion poor so my focus always was on the cash how much money I would make how much money would but in fact my focus is actually on passion so today I say I'm passion rich cash poor it doesn't mean I don't have any cash it means I chase the passion I chase the passion in people and when the people and the passion in people when we see people play their passion the money turns in so it's a slightly different focus so I made some mistakes when I started off as a coaching business. I, fa I had a fancy name that to me meant a lot, uh, but to everyone else made no difference. And it was just a normal coach. I would come in, I would help the business. I, would, I could turn the business around, but it really didn't make, it really didn't connect with the audience what I was doing for all intents and purposes. I was just another coach. When I turned around and started talking about being visible and being networking, I suddenly realized that when you talk to people about networking, everyone thinks networking is going to an event full of strangers in a room, standing up and just uh, introducing yourself and having that really dry, old-fashioned elevator pitch. Well, to me, networking is so much more than that. Networking is, this is networking. Networking can be going to your school committee meeting networking can be at the sports club networking can be networking can be a variety of different things it's how far your mind is 
In fact, one of them, there's a chap in Australia called Bernard Salt, who is a demographic expert. He actually found his, his expertise from being quoted in magazines and became an expert. So one of the first visibilities that I had in my business wasn't as a speaker, but it was, it was being quoted in the, uh, the CEO magazine. Uh, there was a lawyer in Florida that wrote an article about me being the network guru. And she was published across her network in, in Florida. So networking can be slightly different. So as I've come through my journey, I, I've had to really define what I do. So I grow businesses and I grow people exponentially using networking, but networking in a way that they find it to be, to be their DNA. And my, my niche has come down to networking is as simple as spending three, 15 minutes three times a week. You have got the time to spend 15 minutes three times a week. We can grow you by networking. It is that simple. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, you know, you speak along, you know, the lines that I go through is because when I talk about niching, you know, the first word is yeah. networking and it's yeah. the networking and it's on my board. But yeah. the thing is, without people, you cannot grow, right? And you need yeah. people to grow. And I, I, I never understood when people can come and tell me, I'm not curious enough to know about people. I've always been a curious person. I always wanted to know why that person is doing what they are doing, not only in their, um, you know, as their niche, but, you know, just why, how, you know, that was yeah. always the question that I had. And sometimes I drove my dad nuts because, you know, my mind works in a very funny way because I always want to know how things work and how, what makes people tick. Yeah. Why do you do this? And how long have you been doing this? And people think that I'm being nosy. But as a coach, I, I, I was being, I was, I think, mentoring myself to become a coach. <laughs> I know it at the time. But the thing is, you need people for that and networking i think it doesn't matter you don't have to go to a event right you can talk to the supermarket lady who is scanning your groceries and just say hello to her and talk about the weather i mean it doesn't have to be all business you can just talk about somebody and i'll tell you a story the other day i went to um have coffee with my daughter and we were there and the barista was making coffee and it was a cold day and she goes, you guys are brave that you came in. And, you know, one thing led to another. There wasn't anybody else, didn't have anything to do. So she came and sat beside me and she wanted to know. She was asking us questions. What is it that we do and how did we get into it? And, you know, there, boom, I had a coaching client. <laughs> you know, just because we went for coaching. You know? But the thing is, people are curious and your curiosity doesn't have to be bad in such a way but yeah. you have to i think enlighten people with what you do right so i think you th th there's a certain connection that people have and i suppose you ask for some learnings so one of the biggest learnings and things that i i'm working on at the moment i'll have a new book out in a, a month or so is not to waste the time it's to understand where you're wasting time and people say i don't have time for networking now in the professional services sector so lawyers accountants anyone that's looking at works in a six minute time slot or 15 minute time slot always says they don't have time what actually happens is they actually spending too much time with the wrong people so i have this phrase about who's on your plane so when you think about who you're working with who you're connecting with the people you're spending time with invariably nine times out of 10 people are spending time with the wrong people and 18 months ago i got rid of around about 12,000 connections on social media they just weren't in my network they just weren't they just either weren't ready for me weren't prepared to change or had no interest or i could not see the connection and there was no value between us having a connection i don't need friends i don't need friends i don't need tinder all right, social media for me is purely about business connections and introductions. And that's the way I live. So I got rid of all those people. As soon as I got rid of all the noise, I found I've got so much more time to go out and network and grow. And there's something you mentioned before 
about um, being out there in social media. And one thing about networking is if we're in a business and we're growing, don't ever forget that we're constantly being watched. We're constantly being watched. Every step we make, everything we put out on social media, every time we do a podcast, every time we have a book, how we talk to people, people are always constantly watching to see who you are. What I want to make sure is that, uh, and I'll say this to a lot of businesses and any business people watching there, that people don't, there's two things that people look for. People don't care how much you know until they know they care about you. So the first thing is stop talking about you and start talking about people. And the second thing is action speaks louder than words. We can say we're going to do a lot of things, but what people are really looking for is not just the activity in doing things, but the accountability as well. So I have, with all my clients, we have a big accountability. If you say you're going to do something, you do it, you get a reward for doing it. But if you don't do what you say you're going to do, there's a big penalty. And the penalty could be anything from giving me your car, giving me some money, giving donations to my charity. We also have to look at how we differentiate yourself. And what, what caught my eye when I first heard about you was the niche navigator. And I'm going, oh my God, there was automatic, automatically there was a connection because we get each other. We get what we do. Now, yes, we do. Some people say, well, aren't we each other's competition? And I go, well, yeah, I, I suppose in a way we are in some ways. But the certain things that I just concentrate on, the certain things you do. So in a way, we would complement each other as much as we would compete with each other. And, oh, yeah. And as the client sat out there, the client may like what I do, but the culture and the connection is not there. And they may like you. So it's when you say <clears throat> some tips to people and how we can move forward, it's um, get off your backside and do it and stop making excuses. <laughs> You're right. You're, you're right. You're right. Because the, the thing is, that's, you know, what you just said was just so, so profound because here's the other thing is that you think about it. So when I first started my business, you know, my logo was don't think outside the box, let me help you out of it, right? And yeah. I still have that. But the thing is, many people just sit there thinking. I mean, I used to be in the corporate world and I used to go out there and meet people and there were people who were just tired of their jobs because of something or the other. The pay wasn't good, the bosses weren't good, the timing weren't good, I'm just sick of it, I hate doing this, I'm not getting a promotion. And you hear the complaints all the time. And I would challenge them and say, what is it that you are doing to not be in this position? How long have you been in this position? Well, over 30 years for some. Like, you're doing the same thing for 30 years and are you complaining every day? Well, yeah, I don't know what else to do. Well, can I help you? Yeah. Let's talk about what you can do. Have you thought about looking for another job? Have you thought about moving departments? I mean, let's talk about those things. But people do not want to take the first step. So like you said, stop thinking about it and just get up and do it. It's really interesting. You know, you, you absolutely st stuck it on the head there that uh, my wife's um, my wife is ne now she's, she stays at home. She works from home and she does network marketing. And there are so much profound statements, profound growth we learn from network marketing. And it is one of the biggest growth areas and some of the success we see from uh, what I class as what I think are just ordinary people achieving extraordinary things. There's no Olympic coach, Olympic athlete saying, you know, exercise for 20 hours a day and you can be a star. These are just ordinary, with no, with no expectations, no history, no, nothing's been brainwashed. They're just out, they sup up all the information, they listen to the experts and they go and try it. And they're not afraid of making a mistake because they learn from their mistakes. And one of the things you said, it was really profound. We speak to people that are in a rut, that they are, held hostage to their past they keep on doing the same thing all the time yet they expect to have a different outcome yeah. and when people say to me you know how do you motivate people well to me motivation is motivation i can i can tell you what the journey is like i can tell you what it's like on the other side but unless you are prepared and you've got a deep desire to change it's not going to happen. It's what I'm happy telling everyone what I do. I'm, I'm not holding back on my IP. Why not? 
because unless you've got a deep desire to change, it doesn't make any difference. You're going to go back to your work. You're going to go back and read your emails. You're going to pick up the kids. You're going to do something else. You've got to give yourself time. And um, I used to have a slide and you can't see at the back of me. And it's a phrase about, uh, about a picture of a, a bird about to jump. And the bird is scared to jump because they're saying, what happens if I fall? Well, that's the fear of failure. And I turned it around and said, well, what happens if you fly? And yeah. the mindset change. Uh, I think it was Muhammad Ali said, don't count the days, make the days count. Now, you know as well as I know that when you're caring for a person, a loved one who is so sick, and whilst Wendy's had her transplant, she may only have a couple of years left, we don't know. We don't have tomorrow. We, we don't have tomorrow. And when you don't have tomorrow, right, you do the stuff now. You don't make excuses. You do it. You do it because you're passionate about it. You do it because you're making a difference. I, I'm passionate because, yes, I'm a, the visible guy. I'm a coach. I'm out there helping people change. Is that what I'm really passionate about? I'm in the process of, of trying to build some hospitals in Australia to get better centers of transplant excellence. That's, what, that's, a, that's a massive passion of mine. That's not for me. That's to improve lives around the world. But I don't have tomorrow. What I do is today. So we're both the same in terms of, you know, the navigator, the compass. We can show people the direction they're going to go to. But unless they actually want to get off their backside, unless they've got a deep desire to change, unless you're going to stop making excuses, because as humans, we're experts. In it. I can make any excuse in the world not to go to the gym. I can make, I'll even, I'll even do the gardening. In fact, I'll even do the washing go. It's not to go to the gym. So we've got to stop making excuses and we've got to start making a difference. You're right. You're right. You know, time doesn't wait for anybody, right? No. And you have to make it happen, uh, especially for those people who are in a rut. You know, I, I look at my husband now and I, he was like invincible, right? And all of a sudden, when I look at him now, it's like, oh my God, I may not have enough time. So I need to make the most of it. I mean, you are in the same place. And it's hard for us because we are going through it, or people who have gone through it, especially yeah. you have so many diseases out there that play in lives. But, you know, if you're dreaming about something, you know, don't waste time, just do it. That's all I can say. Is and you, you know, the interesting thing is, you know, you talked about our niche and what makes us different. We, we're not asking, we, we don't want sympathy, right? We don't want sympathy from people. We want people just to understand and acknowledge that we're going through uh, a struggle that it's no different to I've got friends who've been through domestic violence and they've come through struggles I've seen people who've gone through cancer and they've got we've all got our own struggles and my struggle and your struggle my struggle is not more important than your struggle and your struggle is not what important is that we do something about it we've got two choices we can go and sit in the corner in a little huddle and just and just cry and say what about me it's not fair it's not fair all we can say is, I'm on this planet for one chance, for once, once only. I'm going to make the most of it. And I'm going to give it a bloody good shot and get out there and do something. And to all those people in business, right, all those people in business, they're out there, though, there's people looking for the next new product. There is always going to be a competition of some type. And it comes back to what we do. We enable you, you find your niche. We understand what your niche is and how you differentiate yourself because a business coach is not a niche, right? right? A networker, even in my business, I can drill my niche down even further to how you network. I can drill it down to how you will network for your particular DNA. Well, I can ensure you that I know I can guarantee that I will have illustrated ROIs in excess of 20 times every time I meet someone. I can guarantee it because of the process I run. Now, whether you actually deliver those ROIs, well, that's, that's up to you whether you can be bothered, but I will show you the return on investment straight away. Now that's my niche. You know what, that, that's your niche and you said it so wonderfully. I'm not only talking to people who are in business, I'm talking to people who want to be in business and yeah. I'm not sure. You know, you need, you know, there's so many out there, so many businesses out there. This one lady was uh, talking 
she's, you know, on a post on her Facebook, she sent out, she goes, I need to work from home, what do you suggest? And she had like 700 posts of, I have this company come join me, this, and there's all these different companies out there who are looking for people and looking for you to join. The thing is, do your homework. We've all fallen for these companies and we realize this is not for me. Do your research, you know. If you do not get up and do the research and expect somebody to, to hand you a, a, a business that's ready-made cookie cutter, it doesn't work. It's not going to be for you. So go exactly. ahead and do something about yourself. You know, I, I'm amazed that people out there don't read, they don't, they don't invest in themselves. So exactly. invest in you know, you have to invest in yourself and grow, right? You have coaches like Gordon, you have coaches like me. I'm not saying join us. I'm saying go find somebody that you work with, that you will feel comfortable with, somebody who is going to challenge you and just do this. So I, 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 I sack as many clients as I get new clients. For me, I don't, to me, it's not whether it's not how much money I can make is to make sure that there's a connection, you know, the way, especially when I do the one-on-one -on -one coaching, the group coaching and the books and the webinars are slightly different, but the one-on-one -on -one coaching, the time I invest in you on a one-on-one -on -one basis, um, unless there's a connection there, I, I don't want to get on the phone or on zoom and hear about, oh, I couldn't do it because of weather is bad. I couldn't do it because I had to put the kids away. Right. Those are just excuses. Those that's your life. So, for me, it's about connectivity. Like you say, about that connectivity, about that culture, about those values, about the passion. Are we really happy to make a difference? And some of the clients can last a month. Some of the clients last three, four, a lifetime. But it's really about finding that connectivity. And when you think about being a business owner, that's exactly the same. Do you want someone to come into your shop to buy one product or do you want someone to come into your shop on a regular basis? Right. Yes. So it's the same, it's, it's exactly the same type, but it's understanding what your niche is, understanding what your differentiation is. And let me be very clear, price is never a differentiation. Price is never a differentiation. If someone says to me, how much do you charge? I turn around to them straight away and said, you're not, I'm, you're not, not for me. And they go, but, but why? I said, you're not for me because price, you're thinking about price. And in Australia, we always took the, the comment says, how much do you cost? How much do you cost? When you think about a coach and the cost of a coach, your mindset is wrong. You invest in a coach, so it's how much is the investment in you? So it's a different yeah. mindset. It's a complete. Yeah. That's, yeah. And that's what we do. And that's about motivation. That's about what in work, when you're in work and you're talking to clients, it's, it's about the difference you make. It's about what's, what's for them. It's not about you. This is not Tinder. This is not flipping saying it's all about me, it's all about me, it's all about me. What we're trying to do, we're trying to grow people and grow businesses by understanding the services that we provide, how it improves someone else's life. And we're going to show them how it improves their life and they engage them. You're welcome. Thank you so much. You know, thank you so much. And that is so profound. That's so, you know, this advice that you're giving, getting today is you know from somebody who has already lived it and worked it the thing is i'm just telling the people who are listening get up and do something about yourself and invest in yourself it's you know maybe you got to you know you get free resources all the time look at some of the youtube videos go to the library borrow a book just read something makes sense right yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, we said it's six o'clock in the morning. I was about 4.30 in the morning to do this, right? It would have been so easy to say, you know what? Can't be bothered. It's too early. But you never know where it's going to go. And um, I know we're going to spend more time talking offline. We're going to spend more time talking about uh, organ transplants and carers and what it affects carers. And we'll have a talk about business. Why? Because it's part of our passion. And you never know what you're going to do until you start having a conversation. There's been no elevated pitch from you or from me. We've just connected. And that's how networking happens. And that's how networking grows. And I know that this relationship is going to go more than this 35 minutes. 
We're going to be we're going to be talking to each other, going, no one gets us, no one gets us about transplants and about carers, and we're going to have a laugh because you know what? <laughs> it's not very often that we smile as carers when we know our when we know our, our patients, our, our loved ones are so sick. You're right, and you know, so like the nurse told me, she she said um, the nurse I met today, she mm-hmm. said, you you know, only some people understand the smiles behind. The yes. pain behind the smiles. That's what exactly. she said. And that was quite, you know, that was, that touched me. I said, oh, wow, she understands. She goes, my husband went through the same thing. So I'm a nurse now because yeah. of that. So, you know, it, it is, yeah, the smiles behind the pain. But you know what? I, this concludes, almost concludes our um, our session together. And Gordon, you're right. We're going to talk some more and we'll just, yeah. you know, compare notes on transplant and care and all that yeah. good stuff. But for those people who are watching, please go ahead, like, subscribe, and share this video because you know what? You never know who wants to hear these things, whose life you may impact. But go invest in yourself. You have coaches like Gordon, like me. There's a lot of people out there who are helping other people. And if you're in the business of helping people, make it about the people and not about you, right? Exactly. You know, thank you, Gordon, and thank everybody. You. Appreciate it. I am honored and humbled, and thank you so much for waking up so early in oh. Australia to be on my show. I am very, very honored. Well, I, I look. I'm honored. Hopefully, um, hopefully, not. It's not too far away. We'll see each other in Chicago one day. Yes, yes. I'll come over to you for the sunshine. Who knows? <laughs> and I'll come over to you for the cold. <laughs> okay. Bye. Okay, bye. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Munira's Musings with your host, Munira Zahabi. If you enjoyed our show, please share and subscribe to this channel. And for more content, please join our Facebook group called Navigate to Your Niche.